Hi and welcome to my introduction to Dreamweaver CS6 video series. In um, this series you're going to learn how to use Adobe Dreamweaver CS6 um, to create a professional easy to maintain website. And um, I very much believe that um, the best way to learn how to use Dreamweaver is to actually use it to create a um, real project or a real website that um, you might um, use. And really this video series is going to be divided into um, three different segments. The first segment is just going to be sort of an introduction to the basics of Dreamweaver. What you see on the window, where all the controls are, um, just some basics. The second part um, of this series, we're going to learn the two fundamental languages of web design. And those are HTML and um, CSS. We're not going to learn everything about those languages, um, but we're going to learn enough about those languages so that we can effectively use them to create a uh, website. Now, don't be um, afraid of learning um, either one of these languages. Um, there are a lot of computer languages out there that are very um, difficult to learn. Their syntax and grammar is very um, convoluted. But HTML and CSS, they're very simple, very straightforward languages. It's something that um, anybody can easily grasp with a little bit of um, uh, a little bit of time and effort. So we'll be going through the basics of um, those two languages. And the third part of this series is going to be actually working on a couple of projects. And let me go ahead and show you those two projects right now uh, that we're going to be working on. Here is the first project that we're going to work on. Uh, I'm calling it Manchester. And you can see the basic design of our website here. And um, you can see that it's got a top navigation here. We're going to have um, quite a few special features in this website. Um, you can see we've got um, a rotating banner right here with a uh, drop down box that has a caption inside of it. We'll see how to do that. Um, you can also see that our uh, top navigation menu here has some drop down links in them. And so we'll see how to use um, or how to add drop down links to our navigation system. Um, if we scroll down here, we'll see how to do some simple rollover effects on our site, how to add a Twitter feed to our site, and also some social media sharing tools. You can see a Facebook share and a Twitter item down here in Google Plus. Um, so quite a few special features. Um, on this page. If we go to another one of the pages, you'll see again the basic layout that we're going to learn how to do. And more importantly, you can see how you could adapt this website with your content, you know, your text and your pictures, and you could actually use this design um, for a real website. And on this page, we're going to um, incorporate a couple of things that are going to be um, very useful to you. Um, one are sortable tables. And you can see I have a little table of information here. And you can see as I click on the different headers here, I can resort the information. So we'll see how to create tables. And not only just tables, but sortable tables. And the second thing we're going to learn how to do on this uh, page is how to use, how to create what are, what are called modal pop-up windows. Now, you may not know what a modal pop-up window is when you hear it, but everybody has seen them before. And For example, when I click on this link here, you're going to see that the background fades out and this little pop-up window appears. And these can be very obnoxious on websites, but um, if they're used properly, uh, they can be really, really useful in adding content to pages. And you can see here, I've got another pop-up with an image here. So we're going to see how to do different kinds of pop-up windows. I even have a Google Map embedded into um, that um, pop-up window. And here we have a pop-up window that has a form inside of it. 
And again, none of this is difficult to do, and we're going to see step by step how to do it um, in this series. If we come to the products page here, you can see the we're going to have a slightly different layout here on this page and you can see that we could very easily have some products here uh, if we go to the services page um, we don't really have anything different on this page at all but when we come to the gallery page this is something that a lot of people want on their website and that's some sort of a photo or video gallery and you can see here I've added a photo gallery on this page and when I click the images the full size version of the image comes up we can play this as a slideshow we can use the controls here to move back and forth through them and there's even Twitter and Facebook like buttons there as well as a close button and up here at the top there's a spot for you to put the caption so this is a really great photo gallery tool and another thing that makes this tool great is that you can not only use it with um, photos but you can also use it with videos and here you see I've got a video gallery and when I click this um, it's gonna bring up a sample YouTube video and you can kind of hear the background uh, music coming out of my speakers there um, I'll mute that but you can see I've got a video from YouTube on this page that I can very easily expand out into full screen mode if I wanted to and again there's another example of a video on that thumbnail so we're going to see how to do photo and um, video galleries um, in this um, series. If I come to the FAQ, the Frequently Asked Questions page, again, very similar in design. The difference is here we have um, what's commonly called a Frequently Asked Questions tool, where I can have a title, and when I click that title, you can see that some information appears. So I can expand and collapse different sections of information. And that's frequently a tool that a lot of people want to um, work into their um, website. And then finally I have our contact page here. And the contact page is going to have a form on it. So you'll see how to um, create a uh, contact form and uh, place it on your, um, on your site. You're also going to notice that as I click these different pages, and my internet's a little bit slow right now, you can see that the background here and the basic color scheme changes a little bit from page to page. And this is actually called skinning, skinning. Um, and we're going to see how to do um, a simple example of creating some skins um, inside of uh, Dreamweaver. Here we've completely changed the color screen from sort of that brownish orange to this blue color right here. Um, and that's something that, um, especially if you have a larger website with lots of different sections on it, can be very um, useful for you. And by the way, if you want to go see the live version of this project, it's simply manchestertemplate.info. You don't need the about.html there, just manchestertemplate.info, and you'll be able to see this live um, website. Be aware that the contact form here, the submit button is disabled. So you want to actually be able to send an email from here because I don't want the uh, spam. Um, so that's going to be the first project that we're going to work through in this series. And again, at the end of it, you will have a professional, easy to use, website that you can actually use for a project for your business for a personal project for an organization whatever you want to do with um, uh, with it and um, the second project that we're going to work on here uh, I'm calling Krakow um, 
That's my hometown in Poland, in case you were wondering, or my family's hometown in Poland. Uh, and you can see here um, a lot of the same features, but a very different um, style of design. And you can see uh, we again have some drop down menus up here. We have um, the rotating banner image with the drop down on it. In this case, the drop down is only coming partially down the page. And as we scroll down, we'll see the footer area here with a simpler contact form that we can fill out. As I go to the about page, you're going to see, um, and again, I'm sorry, my internet connection is a little bit slow right now. Um, you're going to see this page right here. Notice that the layout of the content here is different. We've got a full width title area here, and then we sort of have a left hand sidebar and then a content area. And then we've got another area that goes two thirds of the way over, and then a picture. The footer is the same layout. But you're going to notice the colors match the colors of this page. Whereas I go to the welcome page, it's this mauve color right here. And this goes back to that idea of skinning. And this is a more complex uh, version of skinning than we saw in the first project. Um, uh, but again, it's not something that's um, terribly uh, terribly difficult to do. Um, it's just sort of taking what you learned in the first project and expanding it out and making it a little bit um, more useful. And if I go to the products page here, you'll see again we have a different color scheme. I have again, we're going to see how to do the photo and video gallery. If I come to the services page here, again, We've got a little different layout. Instead of it being a full width, we've got a content area that takes up most of the area, and then a right-hand sidebar. And a special feature that we're going to add on this page is this tabbed box area here. And you can see I've got customer uh, consulting services here. When I click on event management or our team, the content changes. So we'll see how to do those tabbed boxes on um, this page. And if I go to the FAQ page, again, you're going to see that frequently asked questions tool that we used before. So you'll see how to do that again. And again, a slightly different um, layout um, actually matches the about page there. And then the contact page. Um, for this project is going to have a simpler contact form um, on it. And again, I apologize that my internet connection is slow right now. So we'll have a simpler contact page here. But the special feature that we're going to learn how to incorporate into this page is going to be this here. And this is actually called an accordion slider. And if I click these different sections here, you can see a lot like the frequently asked questions tool, those different sections will expand and collapse. So we're going to see how to create um, that item. So those are the two projects that we're going to work with um, in or work through in this series. And again, the goal of this is to make sure that at the end of the series, um, you're very comfortable creating a professional website using um, Dreamweaver. And also, I forgot to mention, if you want to see um, the actual um, version of this website, just go to krakowtemplate.info here. Krakow template.info and you'll be able to um, um, see the actual um, website um, as it appears. And you can see also here the uh, my internet connection has been giving me trouble today. Um, sorry about that. You can see that this rotating banner moves a lot faster on this item 
are on this site than it does on the other. You can adjust that speed um, as need be. So again, our series is going to have three different parts to it. The first part is going to be just understanding some of the basics of Dreamweaver and setting up a um, your site in Dreamweaver. The second part is going to be the basics of HTML and CSS and learning to become comfortable with um, that. And then the third section we're going to work through both this Manchester project and the Krakow project. So you can um, see a practical example of how to use what we learn in the first couple of um, sections. So in the next video, we're going to actually um, open up Dreamweaver and start to uh, learn about the basics of the interface. So I'll see you in the next video.